welcome back to the second installment of the BRCC Mazda MX-5 Championship. For the very first time our drivers are gracing the track at Pembury. Now race one is about to get underway as you can see and that was John Langridge heading out for pole position. Will Blackwell Chambers is down in third position starting right behind John so he's going to need a good start if he wants to get out ahead because the track is extremely hot here which has caused a bit of concern for the tyres and fuel. But we're going to hand it straight over to Andy to run you through all of that action. Thanks, Lindsay. Well, a fascinating grid then for this opening A race of the weekend. John Langridge and local man Jason Greytrex make up the front row ahead of Will Blackwell Chambers and Matt Luff. Steve Phone and Jack Brewer, really impressive uh, qualifying efforts on row three, whilst Ben Short and Joe Wiggin, disappointingly, are only on row four. Ben Hansey and Tom Smith are next ahead of Adam Bessel and Ollie Allwood to round out the top 12. Keep an eye on Adam Craig from 16th on the grid. He should move forward too. Marcus Bailey and William Hayden are towards the tail end of the field, but they both had B race podiums at Brands Hatch last time out while Scott Leach and Richard Baxter round out the 22 car grid. So the red lights go on. For the first time at Pembrey, we're underway and John Langridge from pole position gets a good launch off the line. He will be determined to make amends for that non-finish in the middle of the three races at Brands Hatch last time out. But he's got his nemesis from Brands Hatch, Will Blackwell Chambers in the blue, green and white car right on his tail. Jason Greytrex hunting for grip around the outside line. Jason finished 12th in all three races at Brands Hatch, but using local knowledge to good use here this weekend to qualify on the front row. He's not going to have the lead in the opening exchange Changes. Can he hold on to second place from Blackwell Chambers though? Yes, he can. So Jason Greytrex, the white and red number 33 car, lives in Cardiff, only about an hour or so away from Pembrey. He, above all of the other drivers out there, will have experience of this track. Oh, that's Ben Short. That's Ben Short into Steve Foden. Contact for Ben Short then, the championship leader there. The white number 71 car with the green wheels and now the damaged front bumper in real strife early on. I made the point that he and Joe Wiggin, disappointingly, were only seventh and eighth respectively on the grid. And Ben Short immediately in drama. Let's hope his steering and suspension are OK after what was a fairly hefty clout going down to the S's for the first time. On board with Martin Tolley then. He started this race down in 13th, also right in that hornet's nest where trouble can sometimes find you. It's a short, sharp and high-speed lap here around Pembrey and it's going to be all action, I think, right the way through. A three-car battle for the race lead, though, already, already developing between Language Greytrex and Will Blackwell Chambers. And Ollie Allwood looks to have come through uh, possibly, no, it can't be on the wall, but surely from 12th on the grid, uh, who's come through into a fourth position. We'll pick out who is in fourth in a moment or two. The leading trio, I can tell you, are heading out of the right-hander and Hatchet's hairpin for the first time of asking. Ben Short looks like he's into fifth already with Joe Wiggin sixth. So despite that contact, Short is making progress. He's bringing Joe Wiggin with him as well. But this is the battle for second place. Will Blackwell Chambers will be keen to get past Jason Greytrex here. He's already ahead of all of his early championship rivals, but he knows that with dropped scores, John Langridge will come right back into this because of that non-finish and then a B-race victory at Brands Hatch mean that right now he's about 160-odd points off the championship lead is Langridge, but with the drop scores, that will come right down. He can't really afford many more bad results like that, but for the time being, he can use that get-out-of-jail-free card and he's essentially still in the championship hunt here. Early stages in the season, of course, but uh, it's always useful to look at those uh, championship standings. It's Matt Luff, by the way, in fourth place. Matt, who qualified fourth, was only 11th on the grid at Brands Hatch, so he, like Jason Greytrex, really improving their pace here this weekend in qualifying. Jason actually qualified 15th at Brands Hatch and was on the front row here this morning. In the background, though, we've had the change for fourth now, so Ben Short has got himself ahead of uh, Matt Luff, the leading trio, though, have really escaped now. They've worked well together in these opening laps. They've not really been dicing with each other too much. They've just been trying to pull a gap on the rest of the field. If three cars are willing to work together like that, they can pull away from the rest of the field fairly easily and then work to, uh, then race each other hard in the second half of the race. That may be what we're about to see here. Behind there, there was plenty of hard racing as Joe Wigan has gone into fifth place. And I think he brought Steve Foden through with him as well. Uh, and that all was at the expense of the impressive qualifying, Matt Luff, but Matt unfortunately slipping down the order now, it would seem. On board there through the S's, there's Matt Luff, the white and purple car on the inside line, so yes, uh, the Mac Attack racing car of Joe Wiggins gone through, so too has Steve Foden, and there was somebody else right on his tail, possibly Jack Brewer, is that? No, it's uh, Ben Hansey, I reckon, is it? Yeah, Ben Hansey, number 40 car, from ninth on the grid, making good ground as well. So the 40 machine, the next man to close in behind. Matt Luff as they head out of the right-hander at Brooklands, down the speedway straight, easy flat out then through this right-hand kink of Woodlands. The way Ben Short is pulling right away from this group of cars though. Ben arrives here at Pembrey, six points clear of uh, Brian Trott, but Brian Trott, as you can see, 
is not here this weekend. So that is really going to um, affect the championship situation. Whereas Ben Short knows that he still needs to try and stay in touch with the likes of Langridge and Will Blackwell Chambers in front. And even Jason Greytrax, who, if he can keep this sort of form up, could be a championship contender. That is not the preferred line through the hatchet's hairpin there for Matt Luff. He was trying to go around the outside of Steve Foden, who in turn was alongside Joe Wiggin. And there just wasn't room for three cars in the end. So Luff goes on the grass, locks up, run wide. Ben Hansy goes through as well. And that's a shame because that was a, a race that promised an awful lot for uh, Matt Luff. But sadly, things just not quite um, going the way that uh, he would have hoped they would in the early stages at least. Steve Foden and Joe Wiggin though uh, continuing their battle. This for fifth position though and Joe Wiggin whose pace really impressed a lot of people at Brands Hatch particularly the way in which he would come on strong in the second half of the race. Well he's going to have to come on strong in the second half of this race as well to catch the leading four who are pulling away now from him. He leading the train of cars for fifth. Tom Smith, I think I can see in the background, having a good race as well. Qualified in 10th place. And uh, Tom in the second of the BS motorsport cars. Teammate to Ben Short. Team run by Ben Short. And uh, he's having a much, much better time of it so far this weekend uh, than he did at Brands Hatch last time out. So across the start-finish line, streams the field. Um, little gaps now starting to develop between the various groups of cars. And this is your lead battle, though. John Langridge, Jason Greatrex, Will Blackwell Chambers, absolutely together. Jason Greatrex is just outside the top 10 in points, having had those three 12th place finishes at Brands Hatch. He was very consistent, but couldn't quite break into the top 10 overall. A second place, or even a third here, would do his championship hopes the world of good. Will Blackwell Chambers in third place had a surprisingly disappointing Brands Hatch, didn't he really? He had a sixth in race one, a fourth in race three, and then sandwiched between them was his only podium appearance all weekend with a second place in race number two. But that was a race that was marred by that contact with John Langridge, for which he was not penalised in the end. Um, and there was a big discussion about it, but in the end he uh, won his case. He was not penalised for the contact with the man who leads this race. It was deemed that there was a gap up the inside that Will went for, and then the door was closed too late though for him to avoid the contact it spun Langridge into the gravel and out of the race and briefly put Blackwell Chambers into the lead but of course Ben Short eventually went through uh, to take his first of two victories sorry his um, uh, yeah first of two victories that weekend he won the third race as well did Ben so for Blackwell Chambers, podium results are a must this weekend, but if he can finish second instead of third, that would be even better. And that is what he's on course to do now, because that was a nice move up the inside there of uh, Jason Greytrex into the Hatchets hairpin. Ben Short, though, is getting ominously closer to them. He is starting to reel this podium battle in. And of course, that move Blackwell Chambers just made on Greytrex means that Langridge has pulled a few car lengths advantage. And now we'll really see what Blackwell Chambers has got here. He needs to try and close in on Langridge as quickly as possible and try and wrestle that lead away from him if he can. John Langridge, who was fourth in the championship last year and had a really solid season with two victories and 11 appearances on the podium. But uh, sadly, despite finishing second in that first race at Brands Hatch, that was as good as it would get for the number five car. He really needs some more race victories to try and undo that damage. What he can't afford, though, are more non-finishes. Because a non-finish will, in an A race, will devote you to the B grid. And although he was able to win the final B race, that was only actually, officially, a 33rd placed points finish because what they do is they add the B race results onto the back of the A race results so you score 100 points for a victory but only in the A race a victory in the B race is going to be worth 50 odd 60 points maybe maximum so it really is important that you try and uh, stay out of those B races if you want any chance of winning the title and there's Joe Wiggin he's dicing away with Steve Foden and uh, Ben Hansey still Matt Luff is next in line behind them and then that I think is Adam Bessel is it the number four car the blue and white and he's got a whole heap of pressure. Uh, the yellow and red car there, Jack Brewer, making his first appearance of the season. Then Tom Smith, who's dropped back a little bit in the last few laps. And then this man, Martin Tolley. Excuse me, Martin, yeah, Martin Tolley, 23, is in this group as well. The Go For It Racing squad. He's a little bit further behind them. Martin, one of the most experienced drivers in the championship. Only got the one top 10 finish at Brands Hatch, but he did stay solidly in the A races, which is always crucial. 
reminder, if you're new to this championship, if you finish in the bottom five in an A race, or if you're one of the first five non-finishers, as the case may be, you'll get demoted to the front of the B grid for the next race. The top five B finishers get promoted to the A races. So this promotion and relegation system provides lots of excitement up and down the order. And it's, if you're going to win the championship or have any hopes of doing so, you really need to stay out of those B races. There was a very smoky car in this pack, though. Now, who is that that's uh, working their way down the uh, straight towards us with, I suspect, engine smoke, although it could be bodywork fouling against the tyre? We'll see, I suppose. If the car dies with the pit lane, it must have been engine-related, and it's no longer there. So whoever it was has indeed now pulled into the pit lane. Now, who might that have been that had a blue car in that group? Maybe Dave Turton. I seem to remember the number 30 machine is blue. You can see it in the background there. I think that is Dave Turton into the pit lane, out of the race with mechanical strife. There's the number 91 of Tom Smith, who won the first B race of the weekend. We're on board with Martin Tolley looking at the back of the BS Motorsport car. Now, Tom Smith... He uh, finished 30th officially, which was a B-race victory in that opening race of the weekend. But just to go show, to show how your weekend can change on the tiniest of fractions, he missed out on qualifying for the A-grid by one-tenth of a second. If he'd have gone one-tenth quicker, actually just less than one-tenth quicker in qualifying, he'd have been on the A-grid, and he clearly had good speed as well, because he had a couple of top 20 finishes in the two subsequent A-races, and he qualified on the A-grid in the first place. He could have added another decent points haul to his weekend. So Tom Smith, having solidly qualified, Qualified inside the top 10 outright uh, this weekend will be determined to try and make good on that. He's just ahead of Martin Tolley. I think he's just towards the, maybe just outside the top 10 in these early stages of the first race of the season. But there is the white red BS Motorsport car of Tom Smith turning through the flat out right hand kink at Woodlands, then down to Honda Curve, the final turn back along the uh, main straight again. At the other end of which are the race leaders already, heading out of the first corner of the Hatchet's hairpin, then into this tricky little right-hander at Spitfires, and Will Blackwell Chambers is ducking and diving around now in the mirrors of John Langridge, so he's caught the race leader. It wasn't an enormous gap, admittedly, that Blackwell Chambers had to bridge, but he bridged it fairly rapidly and has now latched onto the rear bumper of the leader. They're dropping Jason Greytrack slightly in third, who is being caught in turn by Ben Short slightly. And then it's this battle going on further back for fifth position. Joe Wiggin hanging on to fifth place. Joe, in his debut in Master of X5 Racing, scored a fourth and then two third place finishes at Brands Hatch to put himself solidly into third place in the championship. He is 12 points off the championship leader, Ben Short, though, and Short is one position ahead of him in this race. So the back attack car, uh, although it's doing well, Joe maybe just lacking a little bit of experience around this circuit, as indeed most of the grid are, in fairness maybe just not quite got to grips with this circuit as well as he has Brands Hatch, a circuit that he has lots of experience at, one of his local circuits, but uh, he is still driving well here. He's got Steve Foden up the inside at Honda, though, and that is not a place you often see overtaking uh, moves accomplished, but, uh, well, Steve Foden with a really nice move there. Nick's fourth place, sorry, fifth place away from um, the Mac Attack car. Oh, Joe Wiggin and uh, Ben Hansi almost made a bit of contact there as they came across the start-finish line, and that brings Matt Luff back into play. So it's once again four, four cars fighting over fifth position. But Joe Wiggin got mugged there, rather better run through Woodlands maybe for Foden and then up the inside at Honda and through he went so Joe Wiggin losing a position we're talking like this is a disastrous race for Joe Wiggin but of course he's still six that's not bad he's still running well he's still on for some decent points here 92 to be precise there are two bonus points available for the fastest lap which perhaps unsurprisingly has been set a lap or so ago by Will Blackwell Chambers so unless anyone goes quicker than his 1 minute 15.9 should take the bonus two points for fastest lap as well. And if you finish second place with fastest lap, you actually score exactly the same amount of points as a race victory does with no fastest lap. You will score 100 for a victory, 98 for second. So if you're second and you get those two bonus points, it all equals out, really. So for Will Blackwell Chambers, things looking good at the moment. This group, though, really entertaining as well. There's Ben Hansi in the number 40 car. Ben didn't get above 15th place at Brands Hatch. Two 15th and one 16th place. So, again, lots of drivers finding that their fortunes are turning for the better here at Pembrey, and then some who really starred at Brands Hatch are having a slightly more trying time this weekend. Right, into the final third, then, of our opening A race of the day. It's been a fairly calm affair so far at the front of the field. Blackwell Chambers, having taken that second place away from Jason Craytrex a few laps ago, has really just been following in the wheel tracks of John Langridge since then. John, though, knows how important this race victory could be for him and Blackwell Chambers knows that as well so he will realise that Langridge is going to be likely maybe to be fairly committed to his defensive driving 
he's not going to just roll over and let Blackwell Chambers through. He never would, but certainly not in this situation where every point is really going to matter now for the rest of the season for John. So Blackwell Chambers maybe will decide that since he's under no pressure from behind, second place with fastest lap is actually equally as good as taking the race lead, really. So he's maybe not going to take too many risks. He'll stay with Langridge, though, and if he can force a mistake out of the race leader, then he will nip through, I'm sure. Blackwell Chambers, the reigning champion, he won last year's championship in the end by uh, some 38 points over Sam Smith. It should have been a lot closer had Sam not retired in the final race of the season. But uh, Blackwell Chambers knows that you know you need to take these results when you can get them. Second place is still better than binning it in your attempt to take the race lead away. So uh, will a canny driver, he'll know what he needs to do here and how hard he really needs to push. Won the championship last year, won it in 2017 as well, of course. Going for the triple, if he can, this season. It's not been done before in the NX5 Championship, but uh, Will Blackwell Chambers, the man most likely to do it. I think it's fairly obvious, though, that this year he's going to have possibly even stiffer competition than he's had in previous seasons, really, because it's not just one or two of the drivers who are capable of fighting him for the title. There are about five or six who legitimately feel they can win races, score podiums on a consistent basis, and ultimately do what it takes to fight for a championship. John Langridge, definitely one of those drivers. And John, for the time being, watching his mirrors, keeping Blackwell Chambers at bay, and on this high-speed Pembrey layout, there are opportunities to overtake, but not a huge amount. So as long as Langridge doesn't make any mistakes and covers when he needs to, Blackwell Chambers is not going to be able to simply breeze by him. Across the start-finish line, they go again. On to another lap, then. Is there room for a move down towards Hatchet's hairpin? No, Blackwell Chambers again stays in his wheel tracks. Greytrex third and short fourth. The gap is closing between those two, but not at a particularly rapid rate. Then it's Steve Foden in fifth, and Joe Wigg in sixth, with Ben Hansey clambering all over him now in seventh. And in the background, Matt Luff there is in the podium, in the pit lane, excuse me. He's not on the podium, he's in the pit lane, uh, Matt Luff. And uh, that's disappointing for Matt, who was a part of this battle, but uh, he's now gone. He's off the road, and that will mean a non-finish, and that will mean he's relegated to the B grid, unfortunately. So the man who was 10th in the championship coming into this race, Matt Luff, set for a non-finish, along with Dave Turton. They are the only two non-finishers at the moment, though. So if things stay as they are, the bottom three finishers in this race will join those two non-finishers in the, the uh, second B race tomorrow morning. Joe Wigan and Ben Hansi then nose to tail, still fighting over this sixth position. Remarkably though, if uh, Joe Wigan hangs on to sixth, it will be his worst finish of the year. I think if you'd have said that to him at the start of the season, he'd have been actually fairly happy to hear that. Consistency is key. And Joe, who has lots of one mate racing under his belt, he's a former race winner in the BMW Compact Cup. He's also been having much success of late in the Citroen C1 Endurance uh, Racing Challenge. And that is one mate racing at its very best. They've got a field of 100 cars set to race at the Silverstone 24-hour race in a few weeks' time, and Joe will be on the grid with his uh, stepfather, Declan McDonnell, as well, sharing a car. Slightly different machinery here, though. These rear-wheel drive, lightweight, roofless um, Mazda MX-5s. Fairly ruthless racing as well out there between these uh, always competitive machines. But in this one, First race of the weekend, a lot of them keeping their powder dry, just not wanting to make any mistakes, not wanting to get too engrossed in any fisticuffs because they have two more races to go. And not only will it affect their results, of course, from this race, but if they damage their car too badly, it's not necessarily going to be that easy to get spare parts here. Obviously, they bring spare parts with them, but quite often uh, we do hear about engines blowing or damage being done to cars and teams sort of driving through the night to go back and pick up new bits from their base and then bring them back. But because we're on the south coast of Wales, not the most accessible part of the UK, that's not necessarily the easiest thing to do here. So they will be very mindful of the fact that they've sort of got what they've got for this weekend. They can't afford any damage. Blackmore Chambers, though, is still applying the pressure. And as I said, if he can force a mistake out of Langridge, then he will try and take advantage of it. And for the first time that we've seen, Langridge is now actively having to defend this race lead. Blackwell Chambers looking to the outside there. I think he got a better run out of the final corner. Used the slipstream down the pit straight then to draw briefly alongside. But Langridge always had the inside line covered and was never going to let Blackwell Chambers through that that easily. Out of Benny, that uh, quick left-hander, one of only two left-handers on the circuit, actually. The next one being this one here, the entry to the S's. Every other corner here at Pembrey is a right-hander, so the left-hand side tyres take a much bi bigger beating than the um, right-side ones do. 
can see because they're such high speed corners as well they really do take some punishment three wheel drive cars though so they distribute that uh, tire wear fairly evenly across the front and rear axle they've got grooved tires as well of course so no uh, need for tire change in between races which keeps the costs down but the racing close as you can see blackwell chambers still within a car length or so of john langridge down to the final corner they go Running out of laps now, though, is Will Blackwell Chambers. In fact, I think they're about to see the last lap board this time through. Out over the curb they go. Yep, last lap begins. And Will Blackwell Chambers, if he's got anything left for John Langridge, now is the time to show it. He forces John to defend the inside line again into the hatchet's hairpin. But really, you're not going to go right round the outside there. And Blackwell Chambers doesn't even attempt the switchback manoeuvre. So, as you were, Langridge from Blackwell Chambers. Greatrex, I don't think he's going to get caught by Ben Short in the end for third position. Langridge working away at the wheel there, really working away at the wheel. That shows that the tyres may not be wearing, but they're certainly getting rather warm now in the, uh, with the track temperatures in the high 20s or maybe low 30s this afternoon. That being temperature maybe 7 or 8 degrees lower than that. It's a very, very warm Easter weekend here at Pembroke. And so tyre management is going to be key over these fairly lengthy 20 minute races. In 20 minutes, they're going to be getting uh, about 15 or 16 laps in. In fact, this is the 16th lap of this uh, first A race. So that's a lot of punishment for the tyres to take. They've got to manage that throughout the race. But Langridge seems to have done that fairly well. He may have had a few little wobbles at the start of the lap, but he's actually pulled away now from Blackwell Chambers in the second half of the lap. And it looks as though the redemption for the disappointing Brands Hatch is going to begin now for John Langridge, who exits the final corner and for the first time in 2019 sees and takes the chequered flag. Brilliant victory there. A measured defensive drive from John Langridge. He fended off Will Blackwell Chambers, who will be relatively happy with second but Langridge gets his first victory. Jason Greatrex his first podium in third with Ben Short recovering to fourth, Steve Foden fifth and Joe Wiggins sixth. Then it's Ben Hansey, Adam Bessel, Jack Brewer in the top ten uh, and rounding out that top ten will be Tom Smith. Matt Luff was a retirement in that race, so too Dave Turton. They will be joined by Richard Baxter, Will Hayden and Scott Leach on the front of the B grid in tomorrow's second B race of the weekend. John, Will kept you on your paces there the whole time. Yeah, he was uh, he was close. Um, thankfully, we got away well and started to edge a bit of a gap. And um, after a while, I knew he was going to start to attack. But he was very good on the brakes, which is fair enough. And uh, it was a nice, clean race and a lovely birthday present for my father today. Oh, well, happy birthday to him. Will, that was a very hard race for you and that. Oh, it was good fun. The weather keeps you nice and warm while you're going round. But um, no, really happy with the result. The car's fantastic. Uh, we may have found a little bit of our power issue from last time. Turns out two gloves and a piece of paper in the airbox doesn't really help you. But we're now got more straight line speed. We can able to keep up with John in the straight line. I was on my best behaviour in that one after uh, what happened last time. So might push a little bit harder in the next one and see what we can do. What a result for you, Jason. Great result. Um, kept it on the island. Didn't now quite have the pace of the front two, but I'm sure we can change that around for tomorrow. The main thing was to be able to keep up the pace in the race to finish up the top so tomorrow gives us a good chance now to go for it.